Today at Gadget Class, we're taking an in-depth look at solid-state drives. What is the best solid-state drive for the money in 2015? Let's face it, buying a solid-state drive can be kind of daunting, kind of frustrating, and confusing. You have so many different review sites out there, so many different benchmark graphs and stuff to look at, it can be kind of overwhelming. I did all that work for you. I've got some benchmark graphs and some startup tests and file copy tests to show you guys here in a minute. Um, but I wanted to make this as easy as possible for you guys. And I know a lot of you don't watch the whole video, so I'm going to jump right into it. Which is the best one for the money? You're basically looking at two different manufacturers right now. you got Crucial with their MX200, their older MX100, and even their entry-level BX100. And then you have Samsung with their 850 Evo, their 850 Pro. Those are the five drives we're going to be looking at today because they lead the pack in terms of best space, performance, features, and value for the money in 2015. So, which one should you buy? I'm going to break it down into three different categories here. First category is for most of you guys that are just looking to upgrade your laptop or desktop computer with the best performing, best value, and space for the money. Two is going to be for network attached storage or server application, where data reliability is your number one concern. And then third is going to be um, for those of you guys that are on an extreme budget and want the absolute most space for the money, features and performance be damned. Okay, so three categories. Who wins the first category? Hands down, the 850 Evo wins it across the board. It beats out the 850 Pro, which was the performance leader of the pack, in enough of the tests to make it the clear performance, value, space, feature, pack, drive winner of the group. Um, the fact that it actually beat out the 850 Pro in enough of the tests to make it a performance leader, um, hands down, makes it the best drive. They've got their new 3D VNAND technology where they're stacking VNAND on top of each other and um, they are really leading the market and they have the best value and performance drive for the money in 2015. If you want to buy this drive, go ahead and click on the little smile guy, hover on or click on the screen up here. A little eye will pop up. Click on that eye and all the links for the video will pop up. You can go straight to Amazon, get this at the best possible deal. Um, Best value for the money is a Samsung 850 Evo. If you have a few more bucks to spend, go ahead and get the 850 Pro. I mean, it did lead the performance uh, performance graphs and enough of the key tests to make it kind of the performance leader, just barely. Um, and it has a 10-year warranty. So if you have a little bit more, you can't go wrong with the 850 Pro. But by far, the 850 Evo is the best value for the money. And it outperformed the 850 Pro in enough tests to make it the best drive hands down. So... Category number two, if you're running a network attached storage or server application, get the MX200, okay? It has a R-A-I-N, RAIN, which is a kind of a version of RAID, a two-device RAID setup where uh, you got data redundancy, but it's on one drive. So if part of the part of the VNAND or the, the little memory chips in there start to go bad, uh, it can actually re reconstruct the data using uh, parts from other places on the VNAND. That being said, they are solid state drives. The failure rate on these is much less, or the mean time between failures is higher, meaning they can go a lot longer without failure than your average spinning hard drive. So your, your reliability being a solid state drive is already way above the spinning platter hard drive. Um, but that being said, the MX200, if you're running a server application, kind of takes the cake. Besides the RAIN technology, it does have power loss protection, meaning if you lose power in the middle of a cycle, it can actually either complete the cycle or uh, manage the power loss so that it will not uh, lose, lose data. That makes it another great feature for having on a server application. While it wasn't the best performing drive, it actually uh, underperformed the MX100, which is the older version and enough of the tests to make it uh, not really a performance leader at all. Uh, but its power consumption is less than, that, than the MX100 with the addition of rain and power loss protection. The MX200 takes the server class uh, category hands down. That being said, you could not go wrong with either, either of these drives for that category. Now, the third one, the, the best, best, most space for the money, um, that's kind of a tough call because the, the Crucial BX100, which is supposed to be the entry level cheapest drive you can buy, um, it, it's actually kind of right about the same price as the 500 gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo. 
the BX100 500 gigabytes versus the 850 Evo 500 gigabytes, uh, the price difference is not big enough to warrant getting the BX100. So I would still recommend the 850 Evo, but compare the price of the two. Go ahead and click on the little eye up here in the corner and look at the price for the BX100 and the 850 Evo. Get the cheapest of the two. The 850 Evo is preferred over the two. If there's only like a five to ten dollar difference, by far, you want to get the 850 Evo. But if uh, the BX100 comes down enough where you're looking at twenty-five, even fifty dollar difference, uh, the BX100 would be recommended. So, in overall performance, value, feature, and space for the money, Samsung 850 Evo takes it hands down. Best server application, the MX200. Best data reliability over the long haul, and best space. For the money, the 850 Evo or the BX100, whichever one is cheaper. So let's jump right into the benchmark graphs here. Let's have some fun. When it comes to benchmarks, most of the time we're going to be seeing what we call synthetic benchmark numbers. These are numbers that are produced using a disk benchmarking application such as Crystal Disk or IO Meter. These are purely synthetic numbers, meaning nothing else is going on in the system. This is the top drive performance using standard clean testing. All right, this isn't going to apply to real-world testing. So I'm also going to show you real-world test results here in a minute. But in terms of synthetic numbers, the Samsung 850 Pro kind of leads the pack. Not by much. I mean, it's hard to see on this graph. They're all kind of in the same place. Uh, you can go over the charts here and, and really compare and scrutinize the numbers. Uh, but most of us don't have the time and don't want to really fuss with all that. But the 850 Pro led the pack, the 850 Evo comes in second place in the synthetic marks, uh, and then the Crucial BX100 is in last place. But when we get over to the real world test, these numbers are going to kind of flip flop, and uh, the BX100 is going to surprise you. But let's take a look at these numbers. If I average them all out and then uh, make them a plus or minus number in relationship to their medium value, and then I add them all together to get an average total quantified number. And this is a kind of a hokey method, but it gives you a very good visual, um, all of the values added together where the drive stands across the board. And again, you see the 850 Pro takes the cake as number one. Uh, the 850 Evo comes in second place, and the Crucial MX100 comes in third place. And then the Crucial BX100 is way down at the bottom. Okay. So that's uh, that's the same as uh, this number, but the, the numbers are all averaged and quantified and then added together to get uh, a more visual representation of where the drive stand. So you got like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, like that, okay? So now let's get to the real world benchmark numbers. And here is, uh, these numbers are produced uh, by storagereview.com. They have their storage mark application uh, where they can test these drives in real world conditions. They have three different test environments. They've got a media server, a productivity environment, and gaming. So media server is going to be a, a computer that's serving audio and video files across a network and playing uh, audio and video files locally. Productivity is going to be someone that's like an average user. They're surfing the web. They're creating documents. Uh, they're watching YouTube videos, that sort of thing. Everyday application stuff. And then gaming is people that are straight gaming. So in the real world test, uh, the drives like are really put to the test with multiple things going on, multiple threads, multiple things happening at the same time. And the 850 Evo like takes the cake across the board. It, it outshines the rest of them by far. Um, it kind of leads the pack there. And then you get over here to the MX200 and the MX100 and they're kind of like just struggling in last place. But look at the BX100. Let's go over to the average quantified numbers here. So when I average the, num the numbers out and uh, make them a positive or negative number in relationship to the median number and then add them all together, the 850 Evo leads the pack, the 850 Pro is in second place, and then look at this here, the BX100 actually jumps up into third place. So even though the Crucial BX100 is a gimp down drive and they don't have all the fancy features on there, in a real world test environment, it actually kind of shines in comparison to the MX200 and the MX100. Uh, granted, the MX200 does have the rain and the data loss or the power loss protection. It is still my top pick for a, a server or NAS environment. 
Um, but it's not really a performer. It's not the top performing drive. It's more of the data reliability drive. The Crucial BX100 is actually a decent drive for the entry level. If you're looking for the most uh, space for the buck, look at that in relationship to the Samsung 850 Evo. If you can get this one a lot cheaper, get that one. If not, by far, get the top performing drive in real world tests, the 850 Evo. Um, it's actually cheaper than the BX100 right now. That might change here in the next few months, but for 2015, the Samsung 850 Evo is the best drive. Now let's take uh, both of those graphs, both this, the synthetic and the real world, combine them together for um, kind of a hokey, um, all the tests combined setup here. And again, the 850 Evo is ahead, uh, 850 Pro is second place, and uh, the, the Crucial BX100 is in third place. Um, this is not the best way to look at data. This more gives you a visual representation of how they place uh, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So the 850 Evo is my top pick. It is the best bang for the buck in 2015, and I would recommend it across the board. Um, you can spend a lot more and get a, an OCZ or a high performance drive, but most of us just want good performance, a lot of space, and a good warranty, the best bang for the buck, and the 850 Evo is by far my top pick. To give you guys the best idea of how well these drives are going to perform for you on an everyday basis, I'm going to do two tests. The first test is going to be a file folder copy. Uh, that's going to be a file folder, mostly pictures. It's got one ISO file with some videos in there. Uh, it's supposed to represent the kind of file folders you guys are probably going to be moving around across your hard drives. The second test is going to be a startup test to see how fast these drives start up. So, starting out with the Samsung 850 Evo, in terms of the file folder copy, it is an 18.11 gigabyte file folder, and the average time was 1 minute 52.8 seconds, and the average transfer rate was 164.788 megabytes, and uh, that's much less than the like the 500 they're capable of, and that's because with uh, pictures, it's a bunch of really small individual files, and each one of those has to be transferred individually, so it slows things way down. But it's the best way to give you guys a real world idea how these drives are going to perform. So let's move on to the Crucial MX200. Unlike all my other tests, the uh, Crucial MX200 actually beat the Samsung 850 Evo in the file folder copy test. I got 1 minute 36.4 seconds, uh, which, ad which is actually pretty good and a pretty impressive lead. Um, but the Crucial MX200 would not install properly as a clone drive on this test bed that I'm using. Uh, the Samsung 850 cloned just fine and installed, booted right up, no problems. But for some reason, every time I try to use a cloned Crucial MX200 on this particular test bed, the motherboard would not detect it and it would not boot off of it. So I had to do a clean install of Windows 8.1 on this test bed. So there's a little bit less going on in the registry and uh, programs installed on this particular uh, install of Windows. That might have affected the, the time, um, but Crucial does have their dynamic write acceleration on their drive, which is kind of their uh, competing feature to Samsung's 3D VNAND. Um, Crucial is claiming that because their data is spread across more chips, they can push out more data channels at the same time versus uh, Samsung having it all stacked on one or two chips. Um, it can't push out as much data at the same time. Um, I'm not going to call it either way on this test. Uh, I'm going to go by the benchmark graphs. The benchmark graphs does show the Samsung 850 Evo still beating out the Crucial MX200 in these tests. Let's move on to, oh, I am doing this in safe mode as well. Um, so I've, I'm deleting as many variables as I can. Uh, but let's go ahead and do the startup test now. Startup tests are kind of hard to do because there's only really one way to effectively get a startup time. You have to uh, use an external timer and press the power button at the same time you start the timer. So to account for that, I have done an average of 20 startup tests for each drive. And the Samsung 850 Evo actually uh, kind of shown here. It actually was ha uh, faster by 0.49 seconds. So that's basically a half of a second faster. Um, that's not a whole lot. You're not going to notice it if you buy one of the Crucial drives. You're going to be all right. 
Uh, you're not going to notice that half a second, but um, those of us that like performance and we like our money, uh, you're going to get a better deal with the 850 Evo. So I'll just do a quick test here to show you how I was doing these for all you testing Nazis. Um, you can do this frame by frame if you want, but I'm going to be pressing the power button the same time I start the timer. And then I'll stop it as soon as uh, the initial splash screen loads. That's pretty much the only way to get a definitive start time. Because as soon as that screen loads, it's uh, done loading that part of Windows. And then it goes on to the next step once you log in. So this is pre-login splash screen timing. One, two, three... And stop. 8.35 seconds. And the average for the 850 Evo, the average was 8.29 seconds. So you can see there's a, probably like a point, uh, maybe a point 0.1, plus or minus point 0.1 to point 0.2 user error there. That's why I averaged it out over 20 tries. And it became pretty clear as I was doing the whole data set. You know, you, you restart a computer 20 times, you get an idea of uh, what the average time is. So the, the MX200 came out at uh, 8.78 seconds. Uh, I won't go ahead and redo that test for you here. Uh, just trust that I've done uh, probably close to 60 tests. And of those, I used uh, 20 20 data sets for each uh, each one.